Okay, you guys, episode one five. Number I can't episode believe, 15. I know. I can't believe we are at episode 15. I can. So, sooner or later, we're going to be at episode 100. You're going to be like, wow, episode 100. Oh, my God. You'll be sick of me by then. I don't know if you're going to be. <laughs> if, I don't know if I can count on you being around by then. I feel like you'll be done with me. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll be in a, in a glass booth like Robin from Howard Stern. Hell, yeah, because by then we'll be on our like our 14th pandemic. And yep. um, we'll just sort of be like, it'll be business as usual, like, you know, going into glass boxes and shit. <laughs> um, I have, well, really weird things are going on astrologically, which I will get into, but I've been having the craziest dreams lately. And I had a dream the other night that I told you I had like a sex dream about like Joe Rogan of all people. Which is Ooh. weird because he wouldn't, I mean, he's like an attractive guy, but he wouldn't be my first choice out of male comics, like, you know, that we know. Mm-hmm. But it was like, the thing that threw me off was we were like, like I was straddling him and his whole body was like red and sweating to the point where like, even in the dream, I was like, are you okay? Like, are you, <laughs> are you overheating? Like his whole body was an erection, like I don't know how else to describe it. Like his whole body. I, I was like, feel like that's realistic. I feel like that's what would actually happen if he got really heated up. I mean, maybe, but yeah, he was basically like a human heart on just full body pulsating. Like the capillaries were inflamed. Like, and, and, we and that's even, not attractive. I mean, I, I mean, I, it probably would be like in the situation, but like not to the point where it's like concerning, like not to the point where I'm like, especially like if it's like an older guy, like you're worried they could be having like some type of like heart attack or something. Mm-hmm. So I actually yesterday was Father's Day and I was like so happy that everybody was posting up pictures of their dads so I could see who I want to date next. So that was, <laughs> it was like a carousel of, you know, of eligible, bat- no, I'm only kidding. Um... <laughs> I was going to say it was a carousel of eligible bachelors. And then, oh, so astral, yeah, so right now Mercury is in retrograde and it's been fucking me. I literally have crystals here today because I'm can, like, it's, Can I get a, a, a quick uh, story of what that means? What does retrograde mean? So when, like, Mercury is the planet that rules communication. So when Mercury is, like, retrograde, it means it's moving backwards and, like, basically your shit is fucked up. So it's like, it causes everything, like communication mishaps, like um, your technology will start acting weird. There'll be delays, mishaps. Um, is this actually proven or is this your like, your crazy witchcraft stuff? I mean, I, first of all, I resent that. Um, <laughs> but no, it's like, it's, you know what's funny is that like Mercury retrograde is like one of those things that like even people who are not into astrology, like we'll talk about and believe in Mercury retrograde. So it's like weird, weird shit happens. Like, I don't know how else to describe it to you. But Mm. uh, yeah, as you said, I'm basically an astro ho. Like I'm really into um, astrology (laughs) and the occult and witchcraft and shit. So I'm into all that. And you and I were talking about like ways that we can incorporate that like into the podcast. I feel like what I should do is maybe like... um, like, I feel like women are more into astrology than men. So maybe I should do like horoscopes, but for dudes and in terms that they can understand. I think that makes sense because that's something I've personally never got. It never made sense to me. Right. Like, I feel like mine would be like, you know, like Saturn is like two degrees, you know, trining with Capricorn AKA like you're not going to get laid this weekend or, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> or like it'll be like, you know, whatever, like some other planet, like Mercury is an Aries, like send that dick pic if you want to. Like now, between now and the 28th of June is the time. Like, I don't know. There could be something there. I'm not sure yet. So so, so to, to dig in a little more, you, you get your readings done, right? You gave your future told. Is that what happened? Um, well, I've gone to see like different like psychics and healers before. Like not everything is about your future. Like I've been to like past life people who tell you about your past lives, um, which is like all of my past lives were fucked up. So it's, it's good because it basically like it's confirmation in me, like based on how my life is going now, I feel like we're keeping in theme. Like my soul Mm -hmm. has kept in theme over the centuries. Like we're just going to continue to live, um, shitty existences and that's sort of fine. 
Um, but yeah, I've gotten all kinds of readings done. And you know what was funny is the woman that I, the reading I just got like lately, like even she said, like you have to start getting laid. Like she didn't say it in those, she, what she said was you have to start having more fun. And she kind of like winked at me. And I was like, can you imagine? <laughs> it's like that bad that even like a psychic is saying like, hey, by the way, like, you know, get your rocks off. Like it's been long enough. <laughs> No, it's it's definitely something you can you can feel and kind of see on somebody and the way they move and act. So I'm sure she uh, she sniffed it on you. Are you saying I'm frigid? <laughs> I don't know about frigid, but I know myself. If if I haven't had sex in a long time, I don't act cool. I act nerdy, and when I have sex, I act a little cooler. It's something I don't know if it's psychological, but it's something my body does. Just like naturally, like you think you're just more yeah. laid back. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like people are, like, normally people are shocked when I told them how long, like, it's been. So, I don't know. Yeah, it it is shocking. Um, Hard right turn from astrology and um, dry spells. But (laughs) today, um, John Feidelberg from Barstool, I called you up and told you I was so excited. He responded to my tweet. I fucking love him. I love that show and I like him. And basically... It's cracking me up because my mom and I have like such an interesting relationship, but she does provide me with like amazing humor. So he tweeted out something about how like he was with his mom and she said something to the effect of, oh, you know, like, you know, I don't want to be scarring, but having kids didn't really make much of a difference in life. And I was cracking up when I read that because that's something my mom said. So I responded and I said, my mom once said, I love my kids more than anything, but in retrospect, I probably could have had a couple dogs and called it a life. Did, did she actually say that? She literally said that, and I called her today to verify the quote. Like, just so everybody knows, I called her to verify, and she was like, oh, yeah. And then he responded again, and he goes, I just read this to my mom, and she said, I'd like to meet that mother, bet I can talk her out of the dogs. And I was like, literally, like, if my like response was I'm tempted to have them join forces for the entertainment value, but together they could easily become too powerful like Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> now, now who is this guy? He is the, um, one of the hosts on KFC radio over at Barstool. Okay. And do you, you have a thing for him or are you just a fan of his work? Uh, can't, why, why not both? Why can't I be both? Why can't You're I right. have a thing you, you and be a both. fan of his work? Well, he's a redhead, and you know that that's, like, my thing these days. Like, well, like, my thing, when I say these days, I mean the last... Yeah, you have a recent attraction to redheads. Yeah, like, for the last week. It could change next week. Um, But also, his name is John Henry. Like, you have to be a cool fucking guy to pull off, like, a colonial name like that. Oh, that that is such a lame name. <laughs> There's there is not much going on with that name. So yeah, you definitely got to be a cool guy. No, I feel like it's cool. Like imagine if your name like your name was like Sam Adams Kane. Like you would have to be fucking cool to pull that off. You so. have to be cool, exactly, because the name is so uncool. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the name is so bland. It's um, just two. It's two first names. That's well, yeah, that's true. Um, speaking of, by the way, like, uh, speaking of past lives, I, I am convinced that I had a bad past life in the colonial era because anything (laughs) colonial gives me weird vibes. Like, I don't know. It just freaks me out, dude. Like that one season of American Horror Story where it was like the colonial, like Roanoke. I'm like, I couldn't watch it. It was like freaking me out. I see them in those outfits, like the pilgrim outfits. It like gives me anxiety. (laughs) You're, you're from the East Coast. Have you ever been to Colonial Williamsburg over in Virginia? No, because I don't want to. I don't like them, and I don't <laughs> want to be a part of any of it. I probably was like a witch and was burned to the stake, which is like not too far fetched. Um, I, I can see that. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if they were like able to still like burn women in this country in this day and age, like I would have been like you know a s'more like literally years ago. I would not have made it. <laughs> you, should, you should go to Colonial Williamsburg. Next time we go to the East Coast, I'm taking you to Colonial Williamsburg. We're going to see all the actors, you know, churning butter and and playing their recorders, all that stuff. Oh, God, no. That's like not, that's like not my vibe. I don't know. That's like too, too pure, too pure for me. Um, well, you know, you know what's right next to Colonial Williamsburg is uh, Bush Gardens, which is owned by... Uh, you know, Budweiser, Bush. Well, yeah, like that's like a theme park. Yeah, a beer-inspired theme park. So we, we can go to Colonial Williamsburg and then go to the beer-inspired theme park right after. 
I don't, you know what, I, to me, like, out, like, I feel like it's like, I don't know, like, I feel like there are certain things that should be separated, you know? And I feel like drinking and theme parks are one of them. Like, because <laughs> that could, that could go sour really quickly. Well, you obviously don't like Epcot then. No, please. Because I want to go on all the crazy rides. I can't be like throwing back shots of Jameson and then being like tossed around. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's not going to work well for me. So, although I guess like if, I mean, I've had sex, I've drank and had sex before and, Mm -hmm. you know, and I've been tossed around and I've, you know, lived to tell the tale. (laughs) I've lived to tell the tale. So I probably would be okay if you put me on a roller coaster after a few shots of JMO. But who knows? You know, you never know. Mm -hmm. Um, well, what, what you do is you go to the the World Showcase over in Epcot, which where you drink every single beer from every country, and then you go on this ride called uh, Mission Space, where they give you realistic G force, like you're going to space. Oh my god, my stomach is like already can't handle it. <laughs> already can't handle it. I, like, what is like? I'm like. I'm trying to think of like what my worst drinking story is. I think there's like a few. Well, I've had alcohol poisoning three times in my life. Really? Yeah. So I know it's really bad. The first time I remember like it was just a regular day like and I went out with my friends. We were like throwing back shots of tequila and then the next day I was so fucked up that like after hours of throwing up I walked downstairs to my like to my pool and I jumped in like just to submerge myself in the cold water and my dad had to bring out, um, like, he literally was, like, he was so nice to me. Like, because my brothers were always, like, drinking and being shitty. So, like, when I when it, like I didn't really do that a lot. So, he was always nice when it happened. So, he, like, brought me out, like, a little, like, tray of, like, saltine crackers and, like, a ginger ale Aww. with, like, a straw. And I literally just, like, put my head on the pavement next to the pool and, like, sipped it out of the straw. Like, I was literally dying. Like, it was so bad. <laughs> And that was like the first time, which wasn't even like that crazy. The second time was Thanksgiving. Wait, wait, wait but how do you know that was alcohol poisoning? Was that a self summary or did you know it was actually alcohol poisoning? Alcohol poisoning is like when you literally can't stop throwing up for hours on end to the point where you're throwing a bile. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah I, 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 then I definitely had alcohol poisoning once. It usually happens <laughs> when you drink on an empty stomach. So uh, you're like, like, bar like fucked up beyond repair like it's it's bad it's it's you know like most people are like oh isn't that just a bad hangover and I'm like no it's significantly worse so the second time it happened was Thanksgiving Eve which is like a big drinking holiday if you're from like the suburbs so I went out for Thanksgiving Eve you know was doing shots of fireball which I'll probably never drink again after this and I was hurling from 7 a.m to 4 p.m it was the Yikes. worst and I had to, I, I ended up missing Thanksgiving because like it was like two o'clock and my dad's like, are you going to make it? And I'm like, there's no way. Like I would have thrown up on the turkey. It would not have been like a good scene. I remember too, like I was Googling ways to get alcohol out of your system because I felt so bad. And one was like, oh, soak it out in a tub. So I got in the tub and I was like, and my dad like knocked on the door and he like called and he's like, is it working? And I'm like, well, the water's brown, but I can't tell if it's my self-tanner or the alcohol seeping out of my pores. So, <laughs> who knows? So, that was like another time. Your dad is such a sweetheart. This guy really cares. He's a good, yeah, he's really good. I always say, like, the running joke is that even though I dress like I have daddy issues, I actually have a wonderful father who is supports I can tell. me and is there for me, I you know, um, all the time. So, yeah, he's amazing. Um, but yeah, and then the third time was before my sister's birthday, which is like, again, it was like, I was like, oh, and two for like the family events that like two, I was too shit, like shitty to show up at. But that was like another time, same thing. I like, I had to get from my grandmother's house to my house. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get there without like just rolling, like opening the car door and like rolling to the side of the road. That's how bad I felt. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah lesson to the children do not ever drink on an empty stomach it will not end well for you yeah eat some eat some bread or eat anything yeah. um and then one time i was like pretty fucked up like are you a j cole fan i yeah i'm not not like a, a fanatic which i know that's what fans short for but enough to uh i saw him live a couple times when he first came out and uh 
Yeah, I know enough of them. I'm a, I'm a fan enough of them. Um, I'm a J. Cole fan, and one year my boss at the time got me tickets to go see J. Cole. So at the Barclays Center, was still in New York. So I called up my friend Omar, who's like the, the biggest J. Cole fan. And I had like an edible. Like I, I remember I left my stuff at SNY, which was like the sports network I worked at at the time. I left all my shit there, and I told my friend Steven, I'm like, okay, like bring this out to me later tonight, whatever. So I take half an edible. I get to Barclays, I barely feel it. So we go into Barclays, I have maybe like two, possibly three shots of tequila, not really sure, it wasn't on the record. Then we go into the concert and Omar has like a pen, so I start hitting the pen over and over and over again. And he was like, I'm like, yeah man, I don't feel anything. And then all of a sudden, J. Cole takes the stage and within 10 minutes, I am higher than I ever wanted to be in my life. Well, that right. sounds wonderful. I, that's the golden rule, by the way. Once you ask yourself, like, wait, I don't feel anything. What, what is this supposed to happen? That's when it hits. Well, I didn't know that, like, edibles and the pen had, like, a delayed reaction. So it was like, Definitely. I'm, like, hitting all this shit. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, half an hour later, like, I was so stoned that I could feel the color blue. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's called tripping balls. You were tripping balls. I was, that's, oh, that's I was tripping thing. balls. Like that's what major, I chased after. Major. It was the strangest thing. Like I could, yeah, I don't know how else to describe it. I could feel the color blue. Like I couldn't tell you now <laughs> what it felt like, but at the time I could have written a dissertation on what the color blue felt like. Like, well, well, did you have a bad trip? Did it, did it turn on you? No, it was, it actually was great the whole time. Like it's just that go. like. Uh, then, like, once the show was over, though, I was so tired. Like, I had to get from Brooklyn back home to New Jersey, which for anyone from not from the area, that's, like, you know, three to four trains easily and an Uber. So I had to do that with, like, one, like, half-open bloodshot eye because I could ba- literally barely keep my eyes open. I was so stoned. I had to navigate from Barclays back to West Caldwell, New Jersey. So... I managed, so, oh, not only that, but then I had to go get my bag from work, right? Now, at SNY, like, they did shows, like, you know, past midnight. So, I'm showing up at midnight, stoned out of my mind. I smell, like, you know, probably, like, weed, you know, booze, and, like, BO. Like, and I have to get my bag where all my coworkers are and try to, like, hustle out. So, I'm texting my friend Steve. They're in the middle of a live sports show. He's like, I don't know what you want me to do. Like, I can't come out. So... I literally like army crawl out of the elevator to get my bag. Like I was in the jungles of Vietnam. Like I literally like crawled out because I didn't want anyone to see me. Grabbed my duffel bag and I'm like, okay, I'm in the clear. Go downstairs to get on the train home. Who do I see? Like one of like my coworkers. And then I and then I have to sit and talk to him for the whole 20 minute ride, knowing full well that he knows that, as you said, I was tripping balls. <laughs> Uh, that sounds like a fun time to me. <laughs> I, I I know exactly what you were going through. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, hate weed after that. So I, it's good that you didn't have that impression. No. I, I mean, like, I've had some bad trips. Like, another time I was at the comedy store where, like, normally I try to keep keep my shit together. Although this time we went up in the belly room for a show and I hit my friend's vape pen a couple times. And I don't know what happened, but... It was not good. Like I, I was sitting across from, a, I remember I was sitting across from, a, I'm not even paying attention to the show at this point. I'm sitting across from a mirror. It's like 20 feet away. And I'm looking at myself in the mirror. And for like, probably like 30 minutes, I'm going, that's me. Wait, is that me? No, that can't be me. Oh my God, it is me for 30 minutes. Just trying to figure out if it was my reflection in the mirror. I was like, I felt like I lost all control of my body too. Have you ever had that where you just feel like you're not like zero motor skills? I was like, (laughs) holy shit. Like I just kept drinking water. Like, like Chris Stefano always says, like, I just kept drinking water. Like that was me. Like I just kept downing Poland spring and hoping for the best and trying not to die. That's the, that's the best thing to do. You sound like you're a fun time when you're tripping bulls. I can't wait to do that with you one day. I mean, it can go one of two ways. It's either going to end up a great story or we're going to end up in jail, which would still be a great story. But, you know, obviously it's a lot worse. 
I don't know. I always have like weird, like, you know me, like my whole life is weird stories. I was also thinking my, like my dental appointment reminder came up the other day and I was thinking about how, I don't think I've told this story before on the podcast, but stop me if I did when I, like my tooth fell out. No, I don't, I don't think, I don't think he did. Oh my God. So I was chilling. I was watching Rick and Morty at my friend Justin's and I remember we were eating fucking Werther's, like the chewy Werther's candy because he was, he was stoned. He was like, oh my God, you have to try these. They're so good. So we're eating them and all of a sudden I like feel something pop in my mouth and I spit and my, my whole, my back tooth, it was the cat. No. My back tooth (laughs) fell out into my hand and I literally just looked down at it and I like looked at Justin and he was like, uh, and I was like, um, and he was like, <laughs> it's going to be okay. And I'm like, it's not going to be okay. Like, why the fuck did my tooth it just fell out? Like, I didn't even know this was it, was happen. Was it bloody or did it was a clean break? No, like it actually was like the cap, you know, like when you get like a, when you get like a root canal and then they just put like a fake tooth on top of it. So it was just that that came out. So it wasn't even like my real tooth. It was like the Oh, cap. so that makes more sense. It wasn't a full tooth. No, but still. I'm that like, makes way more sense. I'm like, that that's, can Yeah, no, just, still, that's, that's not ideal. You do not want that. No, I was like, that can just fall out. So I am like losing my shit. And because I'm like halfway my father's daughter, I'm already calculating how much this is going to run me, like how much this is going to cost me in my head. I'm like, great. It's going to be like $4,000. I literally thought like I have had offers to be a sugar baby. I've never taken them. But because the cost of dental care is so egregious in this country, I'm probably going to have to be a sugar baby to afford my dentist bill at this point. (laughs) it was obscene so I literally was like I like leave Justin's distraught and like I'm on the phone all day like trying to get a dentist to figure this out so finally like I find somebody and they're like come in tonight so I still have to go to work so I show up to work I put my tooth in a little empty pill case which is like so Jeffrey Dahmer to just be walking around with like a human tooth in your bag like could you imagine So I have it like up on my desk at work because I was so nervous I was going to like lose it that I like kept eyes on it all at all times until I went to the dentist. So I have the the tooth on my desk and who walks in? Randy Jackson, like American. Yeah. American Idol. Randy Jackson walks in for a meeting with my boss. And it was amazing, except for we were talking And he's like, what is that? And I'm like, it's my tooth. And he's like, why? And then I had to tell him the whole story. And it was so embarrassing. He was dying. So Randy Jackson? Yeah. He was like, why is your tooth out of your mouth? And I had to like walk him through the whole story. But I mean. Was he like, "Uh, that's a no for me, dog. Did you say that? (laughs) It would have killed. I mean, that would have been amazing if he said that. No, he actually told me. That I was really funny and that if I ever, like, if I'm doing stand-up, like, anytime soon to, like, let him know, like, via my boss. So, that was, like, the... That's a connect. Let's get Randy Jackson on the show. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? He'll be like, oh, yeah, the toothless girl. Like, (laughs) I am 25%. You can't be doing much now. But what was that? That's true. I was going to say I am 25% backwoods, but I had hoped that my, like, you know, like, my dental... um. What, you know, yeah, wasn't being shown through my dentist. You're just like the guy from Tiger King. You're yeah, just like exactly. his boyfriend. Oh my God, with the missing teeth. Like, yeah. I guess that could have been me had I just been full backwoods. Like, losing teeth would have just been like normal. It yeah, wouldn't have you know, a little meth. So, sorry, I'm like grabbing another drink and fucking up the audio like at the same time. Um, <laughs> because my alcohol is more important than the, than the sound of this podcast. That's the God's honest truth. <laughs> I'm, I always wonder, like, what they would dig up about me that could potentially get me canceled. Like, I certainly haven't forced anybody to have sex with me. I haven't, like, done anything um, with, like, underage people. But, like, what, like, yeah, like, what would be my cancelable thing? I can't, I don't know. I, I, think, I think right now you'll be good. The question is, 30 years from now, in a different climate, what's going to be cancelable then? Well, I you do know. some fucked up shit. Well, right, because you and I were, I said that, um, like, at this point in my life, I, you know, I'm really into older guys. But I have a feeling that once I hit, like, you know, 60, you know, 65 and my first husband dies, I'm probably going to then want to date younger guys. Yes. But I can't see myself dating, like, jailbait. Like, I think I would, I would, it would be, like, in their No, 20s. I don't, I don't think you're even, 
you've never been interested in a, in a 17 year old now. Right. So, I, so I think then you'll you'll be fine. I, I think you'll be okay with a 20 year old. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't want to like Kate Beckinsale the whole thing. Like, but <laughs> plus no. you you want this boy to to buy you wine at the liquor store. You can't be making trips at your old age. Exactly. You know, so he has, he exactly. has to go buy you some wine. See, Al, you're thinking, like, you're thinking rationally, which is why yep. we'll probably, you'll probably be living in, well, I would hope you wouldn't be living in the pool house. I hope that you'll have your own mansion <laughs> by then. But if, but for whatever reason, yeah, we're going to need to send him out on, like, weed runs and alcohol runs, and so we need him to Definitely. be of age. For logistics, if not if not for morality, we need him to be of age. Yeah, and I, I think I think he'd, he'd enjoy that. Um, I think so too. I just mm-hmm. can't like, I don't know. Some people think that's like a great sexual matchup, like an experienced older woman and like a younger guy who's like virile and has energy. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, I mean, as long as everything's like in place, like the thought I told you, like my biggest fear is like, like gravitationally where I'll be when I'm older. I just don't know. Um, <laughs> it could be, it could be really bad. Um, I'm going to need all the work done. I was like, I was on the, I was on FaceTime with my grandparents today. They're in their eighties and I was like rubbing an ice cube all over my face. And my grandfather was like, what are you doing? And I was like, <laughs> oh, it keeps you young. And he's like, what are you going to do when you're my age? And I'm like, obviously all the plastic surgery in the world. <laughs> That's what I'll be doing at your age. I want to look like Joan Rivers. I want my, sh- like everything. I want facelift, you know, eye lift, boob lift. Like just hey, fucking it, it, lift it works me up. for some it works for some people and I think I think it'd work for you to be honest you know I, I, I I'm imagining your face at, at 80 and I don't know you you have the right face for it like I think Joan Rivers had the right the right face for it you know you right. can tell at a young age or like look at Dolly Parton like Dolly Parton I don't even yeah. know how old she is but like she's still out there with her boobs out and her tight clothes and her makeup and her long nails and I'm like God bless one that's gonna be me. And like two, why the fuck not? Like you know. Well, it it, it can go wrong. It can go you wrong. At a, you look you look at a Mickey Rourke, and it can go wrong. Oof. But then you look at a at a Chris Jenner, and uh, you know, a beautiful lady. Yeah. You, well, I mean, that's I guess that's up for debate. But I know what you're saying, and yes, <laughs> it's like you don't want to go Kenny Rogers far, but like there is yeah, exactly another example. There's a happy medium for sure. Mm. Um. All right, we're at like. 40-ish minutes. Is there any closing thoughts, any current events, anything you want to talk about before we wrap up? Well, I'm hearing baseball's back, so if that's the case, play ball. That's all I got to say. Oh, great. <laughs> Let's go Mets. I fucking hate baseball. I really... Like, to me, like, my personal hell would be a baseball game where they're, you know, like, that's just like a never-ending baseball game where they're just playing the same song on repeat with like warm beer <laughs> and shit. It, it, it is the most boring, tedious sport, and I'm saying that as a fan. It is it, it is a very slow sport. It's something you'd go for the culture. You know, if you go to a baseball game, you're going for the environment, the atmosphere. The game is just a little extra, in my opinion. Yeah, well, listen, if you say so, but like for me, it's like in baseball, everything takes for fucking ever. It's like, you know, oh, we got to get the the guy up there to bat and then he's got to shuffle his feet three times and then it's got to be three pitches until he even hits the ball and then he moseys on over to base one and then we got to do that. You're a thousand percent right, but you're not there for the excitement. You're not there to watch a football or basketball game. You're there just to, you know, take in the air. You're, 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 You're sitting back. You're ordering a hot dog. You know, you're, you're in the same thing at home. You know, you're, you're doing your taxes. You're reading the newspaper while it's on the background, you know. No one can really pay attention to every pitch of a baseball game. No. For me, like, baseball is to sports what missionary is to sex positions. It's like, sure, we all sit here and pretend to like it, but it's the most fucking boring one, and it's <laughs> and it needs to be said. It needs to be said for everybody's sake. Uh, yeah, I don't, you know, America's favorite pastime. We can do better than that, okay? You know, it, like, it, it hasn't been the pastime in a very long time. I think football kind of took that over. It should be football. I mean, at least there's, like, so, some excitement there. I mean, you know I like UFC, but, like, baseball is just, like... I did say that baseball was the one sport that was going to come back because it's, like, the most pussy sport. Like, there's no contact. There's no, mm-hmm. you know, so, like, out of everything, that would come back, but... 
Well, they they hug and slap ass more than any other uh, any other sport. So you know they're not totally off the hook with Corona stuff. True, it is sort of like the Navy of sports, so to speak. Definitely. Um, definitely. Yeah, that might get me canceled. You know how I was like, oh, maybe there'll be something that that comment might get me canceled in the future. So. <laughs> I just want to state for the record that I love the gays, I love the trans, and everybody in between or offshoots of any of those things. I like all of you, so... And, and the Navy. And the Navy, um, but not baseball. Like, I 1,000%, like, they don't deserve rights. Like, the MLB players <laughs> don't deserve rights. Um, and that's just, you know, that's just how I feel. So, anyway, um, all right, I think it's a wrap for this week. Um, as usual, Al and I and the twins love you and we hope that you stay safe and...